about a month ago, we started hearing cases of kids coming to hospitals around the world with this Kawasaki-like syndrome. Um, and slowly, slowly, the numbers started creeping up, and, and lo and behold, here we are, you know, with cases popping up in New York and now here in Ohio. This does appear to be a different syndrome than Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki disease is an inflammatory process. Most of us believe that it does happen as a result of like a post-infectious inflammatory trigger of some sort. And this also appear, this new syndrome does also appear to be post-infectious, um, but the symptoms are a little bit different. The thing that we want parents to look for is fevers, especially high fevers that are lasting more than four days. We want to know about kids who have fever with rash, abdominal pain, diarrhea, red eyes, swollen hands and feet, anything in that, in that description, especially if it's with fever, we would like to know about it. We've never seen this syndrome before, except for several years ago with another coronavirus, and we've never seen it since, and now all of a sudden, here's another coronavirus breaking out, and we're seeing it again. And for many of these kids, the parents didn't even know. It's not until they come in with the inflammatory syndrome and we test for the antibodies, that the parents were like, oh, they had COVID, we didn't know, because the kids had no symptoms. So it doesn't appear to be linked to the severity of the illness. It does change how we look at coronavirus in children because, you know, if some percentage of them, 1%, 5%, 10%, we don't know yet, are at risk for this syndrome, that really does change things because what we know about Kawasaki disease is that it can damage children's hearts. So what we don't know about this syndrome is can it also do damage to, to little children's bodies that might be more long-term. There's the acute inflammation itself, which we are working very hard to create diagnostic and treatment algorithms for this syndrome. Um, and so managing it acutely is something that we feel like we're starting to get a handle on. But what we don't know yet is what are the long-term con consequences of it, and that's going to take months or years for us to know. We're combing the literature, we're talking to colleagues around the country to get as much data as we can so that we can manage any child who comes in with this syndrome to the best of our abilities. What I want parents to know is that this does still appear to be unusual. Most kids will still be fine but we want parents to bring their kids in if they've had multiple days of fever um, because some of these kids are presenting very sick and we don't want them to stay home. We want to know about them.